Welcome to 22 in 22, where I, Dr. T, talk about 22 different topics in the year 2022. Today's topic is the penis. So what makes a penis a penis? The penis has sort of double duty. One, it has the urethra in it, which allows pee to leave your body. And two, it's responsible for projecting semen, which is the combination of sperm plus other nurturing fluids, ejecting that out of the body during ejaculation. So let's talk first about structure. The structure of the penis is basically three different parts. We've got the shaft, the head, or the glands, and the foreskin, which we'll actually talk about in a different episode. Now within the shaft, you have three different tubes, which are essentially sponges. Now it looks like this. Now this would be what you would see if you cut straight through the shaft of the penis two corpus cavernosum up top and one corpus spongiosum running along the bottom of the penis and that is where the urethra or the pee hole travels through. So erections. Whenever there is arousal, which is usually in the form of either nerve signaling or hormone signaling, the signals will go to the penis, to the sponge, and allow blood to come in. So think about this sponge right now. There's nothing in it. If I were to fill this up with water, it would get more full and more tight. Now, as more blood flows into these three sponges of the penis, it starts to become more erect. And as more and more blood goes into the penis, it becomes less possible for blood to come out. It kind of traps it in there until you have a rigid penis, an erection. And sometimes you can see that trapped blood in the form of veins on your penis when you have an erection, and that's totally fine, nothing to worry about. Um, but the erection itself is going to be extra blood going into your penis and filling up kind of these sponges and causing the erection. Now some of the biggest questions I get about the penis are size. And there are really two different kinds of measurements of the penis, which I'll talk about in other episodes as they are important. But there's the length and then the girth. So girth describes the area or the measurement around the penis. And the length is the, how you measure is you take a ruler or a tape measure and you place it at the top of the penis right on the pubic bone. So push all the way down to the base of the penis along the top ridge and then measure along to the tip. You can do this when the penis is flaccid, which means not erect, or when the penis is erect. The typical measurements for a penis are going to vary depending on who you are, your genetics, and also where you are in puberty. So before puberty, usually the penis is going to measure somewhere or a little over two inches when it's flaccid and that's pre-puberty. So right before puberty is probably how long your penis is gonna be, about two inches not erect. However, the penis grows a lot through puberty. And again, it's gonna vary from person to person, but toward the end of puberty, the average size of a penis is gonna be a little less than four and a half inches flaccid, so not erect, and a little bit over five inches when erect. Now, most of the studies that look at penis length are done in white male populations, so this could be a little bit different depending on your background and genetics. Penises come in all shapes and sizes. They can be thicker at the base and narrower at the tip, thicker at the tip and narrower at the base. They can be the same thickness or girth throughout the shaft. Um, sometimes they can bend a little bit to the left or to the right, a little bit up or a little bit down. Um, if there's a significant bend, uh, that would be a concern and something to talk to your doctor about, but a little bend, totally fine. All right, now along the shaft of the penis and the foreskin, you might notice something called fortis spots, which look like little pimples or little bumps along the shaft of the penis, kind of like chicken skin almost. And what those are are little sweat glands. You can also get little hair follicles that come out of those sweat glands. And so sometimes you'll have some rogue hairs on your penis or on the foreskin, and that's okay. Otherwise you might notice just these little bumps and there's really nothing to do about them. 
other things that can cause bumps on the penis are something called lymphocytes, and that is a lymph node which can be sort of clogged up essentially or blocked um, and that's just because lymph nodes filter blood and sometimes the penis filters a lot of blood and so you can get enlargement of some of those lymph nodes and that might just be a little soft bump on your penis nothing to worry about and it should go away within a few days or so it usually happens when there's a lot of ejaculation or masturbation or sex but it's okay nothing harmful if it's red tender or if you notice any sort of drainage drainage or if it's getting bigger you can always talk to your doctor so I think I've covered the basics of the penis and now I'm gonna get to 10 questions that I've just grabbed from my most recent posts and my YouTube channel and let's see what you guys have asked um, I am a 16 year old male and I feel like my penis has stopped growing when does your penis stop growing so that is a very good question um, the penis grows during puberty it usually grows for about three to four years or so um, everyone starts puberty a little bit differently on average male puberty starts somewhere around the age of 11 but what happens is that the penis growth really is hard to measure and we as physicians don't measure the penis growth because it's so unpredictable and you can have penis growth for many 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 years and so it depends one you're 16 it depends when puberty started for you and it also depends on your genetics and how long it takes for the penis to actually finish growing and so what I would say is it's tough for me to really say um, when the penis is going to stop growing. Everyone's a little bit different. It could grow until you're 20. And there are, it's a variety, it's a spectrum. Um, so really, it's more unique to you. And what I would say is if you have any concerns about the size, certainly talk to your doctor, but um, you might still very well have some penis growth in you. Why am I so afraid of seeing my boyfriend's penis? I've never seen it before and I keep telling myself it's just a body part, but I'm scared as hell to see it or even touch it. What should I do? <laughs> okay, well, first of all, you don't have to. Um, if there is pressure from your partner, that's never good. Um, but we'll talk about that in another episode. But if you're interested or curious, um, you could just start slow look first you don't have to touch I mean it is it's just a body part and maybe your partner's just as scared about something on your body so I would say communication is gonna be where I would start with you um, all right question number three my penis's head is 1.5 inches bigger than the shaft I assume that means the girth not thickness girth probably is it going to be a problem with penetration during sex Will there be any chance that my partner won't be satisfied with me? Okay, so sexual satisfaction, that's really tough to say, but it's not gonna be based on how your penis looks. Um, penises come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Uh, like I said at the beginning, sometimes they can be thicker at the base and narrow at the tip or vice versa, and it sounds like that's what yours is, and that's okay. There are condoms that can fit all types of penises, and you should not have any problem. Question number four. Why can't I pee with an erection? I've had to pee a few times but couldn't because I had an erection or my penis was almost completely erect. It's inconvenient. Okay, so the reason is because what I said at the beginning is the penis has double duty. You pee through it and you have ejaculation. The ejaculation and the peeing come through the same tube though. So there's kind of like a, think of like a train track and where two trains join into one path and one train is the ejaculation train and the other is the P train. Now your body in an effort to make sure that you are only on the P track or on the erection ejaculation track it blocks off one of the tracks and so if you're on the ejaculation track your P track is sort of stalled so your ejaculation can go through as planned and vice versa. If you are on the P track, then your ejaculation route is kind of blocked off. And so that's why it's a shared tube and they have to kind of take turns. It's possible, it just kind of takes some focusing and effort and overcoming some of the default um, sort of stricture musculature that happens um, when you are erect. Next question. How do I know if I have Peyronie's? 
My penis hangs to the left sometimes. Is this something to be concerned about? Okay, so Peyronie's is the unhealthy or severe bend in the penis, and a little bend is totally fine. Peyronie's is usually going to be um, a significant bend that happens because of scarring or um, some sort of a, a trauma that happened to the penis or stricture, um, but there is usually a little bit of narrowing where the bend happens, and it can cause pain either with erections, with peeing, or with sex. So. If you're worried that you have Peyronie's, talk to your doctor. Um, again, there will probably be a little bit of an indentation or a bent, but uh, or a or a dent in the penis. But a little bend is totally fine. Doctor T, our gym teacher is making the guys start wearing jock straps for class. I've heard of wearing a cup for protection in certain sports, but this is just a regular jock strap without a cup. Is this still protecting anything? Or what's the reason of wearing a drop a jock strap on its own? So a jock strap is going to be providing some support and a little bit of protection by pulling things into the body of the penis and the testicles. You're correct in that contact sports or high velocity sports where like a ball is coming at you really fast, um, there's going to be a cup or something that blocks your testicles and your penis. But a jock strap still protects things by pulling them close to the body and keeping things tight. So um, that's probably why, maybe just to get you guys in the practice of things. I'm not sure. I don't. I'm not aware that school districts have different rules and regulations. But I guess that makes sense. Practice. Um, sometimes when I pee, the stream goes all over the place, even though my penis is aimed at the, right at the toilet. Why does this happen, and how do I prevent it? That is so sweet that you want to keep things nice and tidy. <laughs> you can always sit down and aim things, but sometimes it is possible that kind of the walls of the urethra or the pee hole can collapse on each other or kind of get stuck together. Sometimes you might have a little bit of dried semen in there. Um, it's okay. It's possible that sometimes the pee stream just kind of goes all over the place. Um, however, if this is happening consistently or if you always had sort of a split stream that would be something to talk to a doctor about but if it happens every once in a while it's probably because the pee hole is kind of stuck together or you might have some dried semen in there or something like that why do I have hair on the shaft of my penis and how do I prevent it from growing there so these are probably those four to spots that I was talking about or the sweat glands and a few random hairs is, is okay and it's probably nothing really to worry about or do anything about. Um, most penises will have hair around the base of them and then having some stragglers and some hairs up the shaft wouldn't be totally unreasonable. I wouldn't shave them. I mean you could pluck them um, but really it's nothing to be too concerned about. It's They're supposed to be there. If there's a lot of hair then you might want to talk to your doctor and make sure that there hasn't been any sort of um, other hormone signaling in your body that's causing extra hair or um, androgen release, but otherwise a few hairs is, is okay. Um, you could pluck them, but nothing really to worry about. I have a lump under the skin of my penis on the low side of the shaft, and I have had, haven't had sex in three years. It doesn't hurt or bother me. No problems either. It just moves around when you press on it. What could it be? This could be a, a lymphocele, like a lymph node that's just kind of plugged up. Sometimes when lymph nodes get indurated or they've been um, really active and fighting off infection, sometimes they either don't go away entirely or take a long time to go away. You can probably feel some lymph nodes on your neck or in your groin. Um, it's It might be a lymphocele, but it's great that you've um, not had sex in three years, so it's probably not a sexually transmitted infection, but it's probably a lymph node that's just a little indurated or scarred and nothing to worry about. It's great that it doesn't bother you, but you could always talk to a doctor if you were worried. All right, last question, number 10. What age do wet dreams usually stop? I'm 19, but I feel like I completed puberty and my hormones are still there and I've been getting wet dreams since I was 13. So. It's okay. Wet dreams, you're right, do usually start during puberty, but they can last throughout and they usually, it's thought that wet dreams sort of coincide with testosterone levels, which generally
generally is on the rise during puberty and then peaks around your age, so around age 19 or so. And so it kind of makes sense that you would continue to have wet dreams. Um, it's, I'm sure, frustrating and difficult for you to have to clean things every day, but um, you might want to consider wearing, if, you, if it bothers you, um, tighter briefs or something that doesn't rub so much on the sheets. Uh, but I wouldn't be too worried because it's probably just because your testosterone levels are still very high and that's okay. Uh, but try some tighter shorts um, or briefs on in bed and see if that helps. That'll do it for the first installment of 22 in the year 2022. Uh, I look forward to next week and if you have questions you can leave them in the comment section um, for the next episode which will be the clitoris um, or you can visit my website www.askdrt.net and you can leave the comments or questions there and I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Alright, see you next time!